Warning, this episode contains a potentially upsetting dream sequence. While the sequence does not contain graphic imagery or descriptions, it is still fairly emotionally intense and includes the following elements. Being ignored by family and friends. Off-screen harm to a child. An attack and kidnapping by authority figures. And abstracted murder with a bladed weapon. If you need to skip this sequence for any reason, time codes are included in the description. Previously on Super Idols RPG. Rhythmix entered the forest labyrinth at Camp Grandstar and faced off against a full morning of trials within, including misleading fairy lights, disappearing gravity, a fiery bird lady, rocky cliff faces, and Cat Steven. Tensions continued to rise between Queen Bee and Karen until their emotions came to a head at lunchtime. The two stepped aside to talk in private, and Karen confirmed that she wasn't who or what she appeared to be. She promised to explain herself more to Bee and the rest of the group as soon as possible, and the two reconciled their friendship. With that taken care of, the group now has plenty more labyrinth to look forward to, plus a night of camping to boot. That might not be all that our heroes have to contend with, though. On today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hey. And Liv. Hello. Okay, campers, rise and shine, and don't forget your booties, because it's a giant forest labyrinth out there today, and you you want some some good traction in the, the forest. I tried to do a thing. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So we left you off in the middle of some stuff. So you came out to a campground last episode. A, a wonderful standard little campground. Nothing weird at all. It just happened to turn into a giant planetoid sized forest labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Is that not how camping usually goes? It's, it's very, very standard. I'm sure everyone <laughs> has childhood memories along these lines. Yeah, I thought that's what happens. You just stay in the city and just go into the large earth orb for the camping <laughs> experience. You people go camping really weirdly in Canada. We don't really do it like that in the UK. But, you know, it's cool. It's whatever. Oh, yeah, of course. Like that That's, of course, why it's different for, for you yeah, and your experience. Yeah, it's a regional thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yes, you, you you had a grand old time in the Grand Star Labyrinth. You went through a few different trials of the labyrinth. You dealt with some fairy lights. You dealt with some weird gravity. You came across a few colorful characters guarding various parts of the labyrinth, including a firebird lady and a dancing cat boy. You climbed some rock pillars and you made your way finally to a safe area where you had some lunch where you had a lovely little private reconciliation between Queen Bee and Karen, who had been sniping at each other for a lot of the day. So thankfully that tension has eased itself a little bit. We also had that very nice gesture of uh, Jaden making the the rose crystal gem for Lucia at the very end there. So I'm going to say that after you had your lunch, and after all this emotional stuff is worked out, your group spent the rest of the afternoon after lunch, traversing the space in much the same way. Oh, and also you found like just some regular forest hazards that Connie had to direct you away from. Like there's an area where there's poison ivy. Nobody wants to deal with poison ivy. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, yeah. no, never. That's, Ew. that's not a test. It's just unpleasant. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, your successes from earlier in the day gave you all a lot of confidence, as did the release of all that tension from earlier. So nothing has given you any other major trouble since the morning, thankfully. And at 6 p.m. on the dot, you hear another labyrinth-wide message go out that says, All campers, your first day of activities is now coming to a close. Again, please stop where you are or make your way to the nearest safe area to set up camp with your guide for the evening. 
Thank you so much for a wonderful first day, everyone. We can tell the skill level of this year's new idols is very high, and we're very proud of you all. Rest well, and we look forward to seeing who makes it to the lodge first tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be us, obviously. Well, of course. Obviously, but I cannot believe that we have to camp, like actually camp, like on like on the ground. Oh, what's wrong with camping? Do you, do you not want to? Mm, I just, you know, I'm more of like a trailer cabin kind of girl. Hmm. Yeah, me too. That's why we brought camping equipment. Oh, and don't you worry, you'll get your share of cabin sleeping tomorrow night, but don't you knock the ground sleeping either till you tried it. It can be quite pleasant. And Connie is setting up a few things behind you already and starting to, like, nail <laughs> uh, tent nails into the ground. Queen Bee will help. Oh, yeah, awesome. I will just start bringing out my camping supplies, which is, of course, all, like, pink and purple <laughs> and, I guess, teal. I'm just going into the mermaid colors, really. <laughs> Yeah, the, those very, like, 90s colors, I feel like those are. I was going to say just leaning into the Lisa Frank aesthetic. Just yes. like. <laughs> yeah, you found me out. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I, I think, see you. I see my kin. <laughs> I think Jaden kind of, like, looks at everyone setting up a tent and then kind of looks down at the notebook he has and he's, like, he drew, like, a really terrible sketch, but, like, a sketch of the labyrinth being made. Like, panel by panel, what the labyrinth looked like as it grew bigger and bigger. And he just kind of looks down at the ground and he's going to try and use his abilities to make like a little hut out of like earth and stone and stuff like Ooh. that to make a hut for him to live Ooh. in. Oh, I like this. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, well, depending on how complicated you want it to be, I might ask you to unleash your powers. If you're just basically going to raise up like a little dome, then maybe I won't ask that. But if you're going to make like a, a nice little, <laughs> a nice little structure, I might ask you to roll. I want it to be the grandest structure I can because okay. <laughs> I asked to make sure about this last session. He said I can keep my burn. Oh, yes, yes. You still so have, have your burn, so you burn. can definitely use that if you want. Nice. Yeah, and I want to use overcharge, which is um, you turn the full capacity of your incredible powers to overcome an obstacle, reshape the environment, which is what I want to do. Um, spend two <laughs> burn to take a 10 plus when you unleash your powers. Oh, do it. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to make you do it. <laughs> so I think you kind of like, has he has like the book propped up by a tree or something and he's kind of like looking back at it and then looking at the open section of the field in front of him and he places his hands down on the ground and you kind of see it starts off like a little tremor and then it gets more and more violent and all of a sudden you just see pillars of stone and earth and rock jut out of the ground to make a fairly sizable almost a house it's more like a studio apartment <laughs> that kind of deal <laughs> And it's just a floor plan, obviously. It doesn't come out with, like, a fucking TV or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Yeah, as far as we know, the only electronics you can make are instruments. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if it had everything, but it's made of rock? Exactly, pretty much. It's probably got some, like, gr moss and grass in some places. Yeah, do you have, like, stone chairs or everything or anything in there, too? Or Yeah, for sure, yeah. We've got stone <laughs> furniture, basically. Stone apartment Fifteen hundred dollars a month. That's <laughs> 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 allowed. No parking though. <laughs> no easy access to transit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Valerie sees this as wow. That's 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 amazing. That's oh great. Oh my god! Wow. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I made. I mean, there should be enough room for everyone if you want to sleep in here. I think it should keep us warm as well. I, there's a fireplace. No wood though, so we probably have to collect the wood. But wait, is it dark? Is it a dark space? I think right now it probably is, yeah. Um, Lucia extends her hand and little orbs of light start to kind of like float around, almost as if there are strings of fairy lights or whatever up on the walls. And I think there's like a little cluster where the table is. She sends them over to where the fireplace is. So there's like little bits of pink light flowing everywhere. Oh, I love this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you make a good team, Lucia. Yeah. During all this, Connie has still been like nailing stuff into the ground, so they haven't heard necessarily all this rock rising behind them. <laughs> so they wipe their brow and go, oh, okay, I think that's the last one. And they turn around to see this full yeah, yeah. structure behind them. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, Queen Bee is there with the mallet in the hand. She's like, oh. I made a room for you as well. Well, I'm glad to see that y'all have some, some choice. Uh, anybody who wants uh, 
tent tent with with me uh you're more than welcome if you prefer a, a solid roof over your head then that absolutely feel free that's very impressive Jaden. thank you i take my nice sleeping bag out of the tent and then <laughs> to uh to the new structure this is so cool <laughs> i mean it's not as big as a labyrinth but maybe i can get to that extent one day no, no, it's it's beautiful. It's great. Defeats the purpose of camping a little bit, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, we're still camping in... I mean, if anything, we're camping in nature more in this than in a tent. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. Valerie looks over at the tent and at Connie and, and tells them, like, that's very nice of you to offer, and I, I appreciate it. Um... Um, and then she just picks up her pack and, and walks into the stone apartment. <laughs> and Connie just laughs. They're like, "No, I totally understand. This is uh, very, this is very impressive. And honestly, I might have to join in um, now that you've sold me on it." <laughs> Lucia like adjusts her bag, and as she kind of like flounces past Jaden to go pick out a stone bed, she's just like, "Yeah, it's not bad. Pretty cool." Jaden just grins. Um, since Jaden made this for all of us, I think Jaden should pick the first bed. That makes sense, uh, right? Oh. That seems fair. Okay. Um, I mean, I made them quite literally all identical because uh, too much variation was a bit hard for me. So I'd, I'd pick that one. He just picked a random <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. I'm taking this one and I take the one that's furthest from the window and closest to <laughs> the doors. <laughs> I find the one with the most moss because I think that would be the softest one. <laughs> Valerie just walks into the whatever's the next one that's open. <laughs> the one closest to the window. Sure. And Karen takes the one nearest to Queen Bee. Mm -hmm. Aww. Cute. Yeah. And I guess Connie takes whatever one is the last one because they want everybody to have at least some kind of choice. <laughs> Good mentor. Because we're going to sleep, I'm going to lose all of these points anyway. I'm just burning them. Uh, I'm going to burn a one of my burns as well to make a fire, like create some coal and make a fire. Jaden kind of does the same trick he did with the rose quartz. He like gathers some dirt in the palm of his hand and then squeezes it. And you kind of see that like, pulses of basically each of the elements that he, he has power of. You kind of see a pulse of it through his like enclosed fingertips. And when he releases... He just like has a pile of coal, like starts setting up in the fire pit. And then he just kind of like with a finger, almost like his fingers are light, so that just sets the coal alight so that we can start roasting. Well, I think this is going to be a lovely little evening uh, inside, I, I suppose it'll be. Um, and I have just the thing to make it even better. And she reaches into her bag and pulls out s'more materials. Ooh. What are those? Angie, what? Uh, you don't know what s'mores are? Yeah, Angie wouldn't know what s'mores are. <laughs> <laughs> Angie has never camped a day in her life before this moment. <laughs> Angie, are you for real? Uh, yeah, it's just like chocolate and graham crackers and marshmallows. What's they're they're for the s'mores? S'mores. Only the most magical substance that exists on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. You roast a marshmallow until it's soft, and then you put it on a graham cracker with, with chocolate. It's literally all the good things in life. Carbs, chocolate, and sugar. This is true. This is true. I mean, cho chocolate usually has sugar. Okay, Angie has to have the first one. Everybody, move, move. <laughs> Angie's getting the oh, first yeah. one. Okay, okay, okay. So first you have to toast the marshmallow. Now, some people are, um, oh, what's the best word? I don't know. Maybe lost? I don't know. But some people like to like get them nice and or like dark and brown and like burn them. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You gotta like lightly yeah. tan it. Yeah, that sounds gross. Yeah, it just tastes like ash. It's not good. Um, <laughs> like Lucy is like so excited. I don't even know if there's sticks. Lucy is juiced. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love this image of their little stone house in the middle of the woods with like the nice cozy chimney smoke coming out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Super Idols goes cottage core. Love to yeah. see it. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have to get a picture of us in front of the house. Oh yes. 
for the idol gram before the sun sets. We definitely need a photo. We need it. Everybody yes. in. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so everybody is heading outside of the little house and getting set up. The light in the labyrinth is starting to go down a bit at this point. It's still like whatever artificial light is in here, but it still looks like fairly natural evening light just due to whatever power is at work here. Yeah. I think you'll probably like find a stump or something and prop up a phone yeah. <laughs> with a timer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I was going to say Valerie makes a little pillar to set the phone on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We have to have Connie in the picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. How else will everybody know that we were at this camp? This very expensive, <laughs> very, like, luxurious camp. Come exactly. On. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> this could just be any old stone house in the middle of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> you all gather around in front of the house. You make sure to get the little, like, cozy chimney framed just behind you with a nice firelight giving you a nice, like, glow around everybody. Jeez. Peace signs. Yes. Peace signs. Mm-hmm. Peace. Of course. And at the last second, Karen runs up to get into the like part of the frame where like she's just got her head poking up from the corner, like <laughs> like in Love Live. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> oh no. Yes. Like Love Live. Instead of doing a peace sign, Lucia pits a finger, like has one finger up on each hand and sticks them behind her head like little horns. <laughs> Let me have oh. this. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Oh, remind me to commission this at some point. It's really, it's cute. really cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we should probably hurry back in because the coals won't last long and I don't think I can make any more for a bit. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, come on, everyone. <laughs> come on, s'mores. <laughs> Time for s'mores. Yeah, so you all rush inside and you get your, your s'more stuff set up. And uh, how does Angie's first s'more making attempt go? Um, I'll roll. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) We should record it for the diagram. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so I'm like, Angie's first s'more experience. And then, uh, oh my gosh, the pressure. Uh, She takes a bite and then, oh, oh my God. This is so good. Right. But she's right. like right. she's like covering her mouth as she's talking so that it's not just a bunch of sticky gooeyness. <laughs> Smart. It is for the idol gram after all. He told you it was sublime, right? Yes. Wow. A first. I'm so I'm just I'm happy for you. Um and Lucia immediately just starts making tons. Um just <laughs> honestly at some point it's she's just eating more roasted marshmallows than s'mores. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. like that kid at some mm-hmm. point. I was going to say I think the first one that Lucia makes like when the marshmallow is ready to go it glows purple and Valerie just like snags it telepathically. <laughs> um Lucia like looks over at Vivi but then like nods. Like okay. I respect the game. <laughs> yeah, Vivi's mouth is full and her eyes are wide like, who, me? What? <laughs> mm, I see you. Okay. Mm. Lucia keeps going for more. And like, when Jaden made this place, he didn't make enough space around the fire pit. So with Lucia constantly coming back for more, he's like, okay, I can't reach the fire from, okay, I'll just, and he kind of just uses his finger as a fire and roast the marshmallow over his finger instead. And it makes it small out of that. Karen raises her little stick with a marshmallow on it over Jaden's flame instead of the regular one. <laughs> um, I think as like the night goes on and we're just kind of like hanging out, Lucia uses just like a bit of her powers to kind of play with the light that the fire is making. So because she's affecting the light, she's also making shadows. Like she's not controlling the shadow. She can't do that. But basically has like little shadow creatures and like puppets essentially kind of like playing on the walls of the stone. Just just for funsies. Oh, nice. Wow. This is starting to sound like a, one of those philosophical arguments. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Suddenly you all oh, discover no, that the world you've been living in is false. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. We walk out of the cave and... No, because we are. We're in a cave. The, the oh, labyrinth no. was the entrance the to the real world. You've exited the Matrix. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look forward to our next hit single, Everything You Know is a Lie. Why doesn't anyone understand? We keep trying to explain it, but nobody believes us. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so... Uh, Actually, before before I do my thing, I, I want to hear a little bit from uh, Queen Bee, because I, I think we haven't heard uh, Queen Bee's s'mores yet. 
Uh, they are a little on the burnt side, to be honest. Aww. <laughs> uh, adds, adds a little hint of bitter, it works. Oh, fair. You, sometimes the little like charcoaly bits can add some flavor of their own. Me, live the player. I love the charcoaly bits, so. Yeah, but also I, I, li- I like the idea that maybe like Alan is the very practical camper, but not necessarily the most finessed s- s'more maker. Yeah, no. So yeah, you, you enjoy the, the rest of your, your s'more making and general camping camaraderie inside your lovely little house until it gets to be a little bit closer to bedtime and Connie yawns and goes, oh, okay, everybody. So before everybody goes to bed, um, if anybody needs to go out back or, where, or wherever and uh, detransform or retransform or whatever you need to do, I know power stuff can get weird if you're transformed for too long. So whatever, take a sec to do that if you need to. I won't watch. Don't worry. And come back however you need to. Oh, that's, I completely forgot about that. Okay. He's going to detransform oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> Just underscore. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jaden? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait. Did, did, did you not know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I knew. I was. It was a joke. Okay, no, I was. I, I, was, I was worried for a second. Okay. Um. <laughs> Sorry that I'm gonna raise your things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll raise Jaden's mundane and lower danger. Is anybody else transforming right here and now? I'm going to sneak out and de-transform and re-transform. Yeah, you don't have to sneak. You can just, like, find a private spot in the woods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, same basic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vivi's going to do that, but she's just going to do that in the little room that's set up and sort of going out into the woods. <laughs> yeah, are there enough walls within the structure to do that, J- or a Drek? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think Queen is going to power through. Okay. Just uh, stay transformed. All right, so I'll get back to you in a sec here. I'm just going to do everybody else's shifts here real quick. So I think I'm just going to, I'm probably going to do a blanket raise mundane and lower danger for everybody just to, just because you're all having a very mundane moment that's not dangerous. When Lucia comes back from transforming, she gets like ready for bed, piles her hair up in a bonnet and plops down (laughs) on her little mossy bed. I mean, she's like put stuff on it, but. And is anybody retransforming for the night? Or are you staying untransformed for the evening? I'll probably stay untransformed for the evening. Yeah, same. Uh, so will Valerie. She also takes out a, a roll of, you know, one of those like toiletry rolls, uh, but it has it has a mirror and a bunch of makeup, and she she get just like makes her take off all of her makeup before she goes to bed so that she can put on fresh in the morning, even though she's going to spend the entire rest of the day transformed, it's important, you know? Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, but it, uh, Queen Bee is not detransforming, and I think Connie does pick up on this, and they, uh, where, whereabouts are you? Are you still near the, the fire, Queen Bee? Uh, I'm moving towards the bed, I'm setting up a few things from, uh, my camping supplies, which are kinda well-worn, and, like, military green, grey, they're just very practical stuff, so just a flashlight, a uh, canteen. Mm-hmm. Connie comes over at one point um, and they give a knock on the, the rock, I guess, and and say, knock, knock. Um, y- you sure you don't need to, to go out and, and de-transform or, or something or anything, uh, Queen Bee? Oh, no, don't worry. I'm doing great. Well, it, you sh- are you sure? I, kn- I know that I've heard some things about people staying transformed too long, people getting weird stuff happening with their powers, or some people get stuck that way. I know we're not close to that point yet, but... No, I just, uh, I think someone should be ready just in case anything happens during the night. Okay. Well, you just let me know if there's anything that feels weird or anything. Again, I'm, I'm here to uh, take you to the lodge if you need to, if there's anything. I, I really appreciate it, Connie. I just, uh, don't worry. I've I've done overnight a couple times. It's it's fine. Okay. Well, you know yourself better than me, so I won't, I won't press, but thank, just wanted to check. All right, and they, they leave you alone at that. But change into pajamas. Aw. <laughs> like literally change? Like magical change? Magical change. It's like uh, nice. tartan pattern pants with gold and uh, black uh, and uh, black t-shirt uh, with a little gold crown. Aw. <laughs> All right, so, and as everybody is starting to, to get ready to go to bed, Connie stops everybody for a second and says, um... Now, bef- before everyone gets settled in, I do want to give y'all a, um, a a warning of sorts. Your brochures don't really mention this because it's it's supposed to be um a surprise, you'd call it. 
Uh, shock, shock to the system is, is maybe more like it. But um, you know that um, Prophetess's power is uh, dream manipulation. Um, and she's not going to control your dreams, necessarily. Um, but she does want to nudge them in a certain direction, let's say. Um, and it may not be totally pleasant. I don't want to worry you too much about it, because I think the specifics vary from person to person, but I do want you to just have a, a heads up that you may not have the most restful night of sleep you've ever had tonight. Probably um, all the better that we have these nice beds to sleep on tonight. Thank you very much for that, Jaden. Oh, um, that was my pleasure. Uh, how bad are the dreams going to be? Uh, again, it, it varies from person to person. Um, it could range from a, a light nightmare to a full-on night terror. It's, it's hard to predict. I mean, if it's part of the training camp... Yeah, I'm seeing why you didn't put it on the brochure. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some things that I, I've i tried to talk with them about before. It's not my favorite part of this whole um, the whole experience, let's say. Um, but it's the way they want to do it, and uh, it's they have their reasons for it. That's all I'm really going to say, I guess. Oh, well, um, thank you for the warning, then. It can't be as bad as, like anything that we went through today i would hope not especially with all with all of y'all being like so so young and new at this there, you haven't you haven't experienced a whole lot yet that would be that terrifying I'd, i would hope i guess we'll find out good night everyone all right have a good night good night 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 and as you get comfy in your sleeping bags on your little stone beds and you start to fall asleep, and eventually, once you are all asleep, you start to dream. And you don't all share the same dream, but you do all end up having the same type of dream. Tell me, if your character were to dream about something that they are afraid of about their powers, what would they dream of? So, in Lucia's dream, there's like a big performance and um, everybody's going on and they're calling their names and, you know, everybody's doing their little intro onto the stage. She's, she's so excited. She's like jumping up and down, trying to shake off the nerves. She's so ready for this. And they call her name. They call Trixie and she runs out onto the stage like, arms spread wide open, big smile on her face, and it's dead silent. She sees everybody else from Rhythmics looking around, really confused. They're calling her name, and she's like, oh, I'm right here, guys. Hi, hello, it's Trixie. And nobody is responding whatsoever. They're walking right past her, and eventually they kind of call it up like, okay, well, you know, the show must go on. And she is desperately trying to get anybody to notice her. She's waving hands in front of their faces. She's reaching out to people in the crowd. She goes behind stage and she's trying to talk to the stage crew and nobody can see her. So she rushes home because, you know, something must be wrong. And, and when something's wrong, you go to your parents. Your parents can fix anything. And they don't see her either. They're just living their lives. Her siblings are going through their day-to-day, -day, um, you know, whatever they're doing late at night. Uh, Ava's playing with her toys, Teo's studying, and nobody notices her. Nobody hears her. She's screaming at this point, like, just screaming in their faces, like, crying, like, please see me. And nobody sees her. So we're back at during the heist in the Crimson Signal building and uh, the guards are coming in and this time Queen Bee stands her ground and she raises her arms and a stream of bees come crashing through the window and just attacks the guards and it does nothing. And they're laughing. They're laughing at her. They just... They don't even swat them aside. They just barrel through and just tackle her and grab her and, and they're gonna take her away. I 
think for Angie, her largest fear would be um, she can usually focus her anger to her target when she needs it to, but when she's dreaming, she's at home and she doesn't know what the trigger is, but she recognizes what the anger feels like that fuels her powers and she ends up destroying their home with her family inside, but they get out. But I think her little brother got pretty hurt from it. So that would be essentially what happened is that she'd lose control and be so angry and destroy something she shouldn't have and put her family in danger. Rhythmics is performing right now against, you know, Sagittarius. I think it's Sagittarius. It's like a competition where we're competing against each other, but we're also like combat the way we were doing in the last time we came across them. And we have an audience like last time as well. And I think he is at the back playing the drum, trying to keep the pace and the beat of the song we're playing while taking on their attack, the onslaught. And he keeps missing beats here and there he keeps getting distracted and the more this happens he gets more and more frustrated every time they try and attack him he narrowly dodges but in the process ends up like losing the rhythm of the song we're playing and ends up in the process causing people to step on toes and miss lyrics and stuff like that and eventually an attack actually lands and throws him off the drum set and in his anger and frustration he kind of just slams the ground and even though his fist doesn't have much force behind it the whole earth trembles and a crack opens and cracks his way down past the force field and into the audience and you don't see it but all you hear are screams and panic people running trying to escape people asking for help and then you kind of fast forward a couple of weeks ahead and it's the rhythmics group um, training, practicing for their next show and Jaden not being part of them he kind of is watching and I think a few of them catch his eye and give him the dirtiest of looks you could possibly give anyone and he shrinks away at the gaze and hurries off and then fast forward another maybe five years or something like that this time he's back at home in the UK his parents are working probably two or three jobs more than they did before because of how much money they spent to send him off to Canada for schooling and that didn't work out and now that he's back they have all that debt and also an extra uh, mouth to feed again so he's kind of watching them work themselves to the bone while he can't do anything really to help. Valerie has a dream similar to Jaden's. She's seeing herself in a battle with Sagittaria, and instead of losing her powers like she did in their rematch, and instead of losing control, she just decides that she's sick of this, and she creates a wall of swords and brings them down on the whole group, and, you know, in this sort of dream state, they just cut into pieces and disappear, and for a moment she's horrified she's done something horrible again but the audience cheers and she just turns and bows and then it's another stage another situation someone attacks her and she just cuts them down and these visions keep happening where she just keeps fighting but every time she does she's less and less shocked and there's a feeling that that sets in as she gets more success that this is just this is how you become successful is that she stopped being horrified at the things that she does by accident and now she's she's really not letting anyone stand in her way and at some point there's the rest of Rhythmics standing against her and yelling at her and she just creates another wall of swords and brings it down. Mary Rain appears to tell her something. She looks proud but the, the words she says are kind of indistinct and Vivi with a cold expression creates another sword in her hand and uses both of them to cut down Mary Rain. And as 
all of your dreams come to a close, the scenes start to break down into pieces, like glass shattering apart. The shards of upsetting imagery drift away into darkness around you. You find yourself falling through black space until you land surprisingly softly on an endless, smooth plain of glowing neon teal that seems to radiate a calming energy that recenters you. You are safe. Everything is okay. Nobody's hurt. And then, standing before you in this space, is Prophetess in her full idol costume, neon jumpsuit and visor and everything. And she says to you, I did not conjure forth these images. I only asked your dreams a question. What do you fear about your abilities? And this is what they've shown you. I understand, and I'm sorry that you feel such pain inside you. You're very young, and the consequences of having power can be unpredictable and frightening. But I want to tell you here and now, it is possible to reach the full potential of your powers without spiraling into disaster. All you need is more experience and more control. I can teach you that, or at least give you the building blocks you need to teach yourself. I look forward to meeting you. And with that, the dream fades away, and you begin to wake up. So how's everyone feeling? Yeah, I'm good. Angie, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the way to put it. I think actually as you're waking up, something you can smell over the fire pit. Connie has set up like a skillet or something like that. And they're making pancakes over the fire. And they're just about done as you all start waking up. So you can smell the space smelling like pancakes. Mm -hmm. Pan uh, I think you... I don't know if this. I I know I know other people have have said they feel this too, but I don't know if everyone here has. But the feeling when you 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 dream that you have an argument with someone and you wake up and you know they didn't actually say the thing, but you 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 still feel mad at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and hot on them, so upset. Yeah, yeah, that's how Valerie feels about herself right now. Like Oof. she didn't do the things in her dream, but she still feels terrible about them mm -hmm. when Jaden wakes up i think he's, he's feeling a bit shaken he lost control of his powers but i think um when he wakes up and like looks up at the stone ceiling above him and then like steps out of the bed he managed to make i think he kind of runs his hand across the wall and the bed and just reminds himself i can keep under control i i just need to practice i, I did this i can do more and better. And he kind of is like mumbling that under his breath. So Angie wakes up. She does feel rested. And at first, there's like a series of emotions, I guess. At first, uh, she's immediately worried, but then realizes that it's a dream and that her family's okay. Then after the relief, she's really mad at whoever did the dream thing. Mm hmm. <laughs> Like, the first thing I do, I'm going to punch that person in the face. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think there's other ways you could have left your little message. And uh, <laughs> she's kind of mumbling that to herself, though. <laughs> and <laughs> she's going to, like, fold her sleeping bag angrily. Lucia is just sitting there silently, I think. Like... For the first time, not just running her mouth, but just kind of like sitting up in bed, staring off into space. Queen Bee gets up and starts uh, packing the, her things, but and she's uh, shaking up and she's avoiding people's eyes, especially Angie. Yeah, I think uh, as as Connie notices that you you all are waking up and obviously looking out of sorts, they look sympathetically at you all uh, and say. Hey, everybody, um, I know you might be feeling a little weird this morning, and I know it was difficult, but I think it's necessary to her process, so 
first, I, I want to apologize. And uh, second, I want to ho- help make it a little better this morning with a nice breakfast for y'all at the very least. Thank you, Connie. Thank, thank you. That's that's very nice. You don't have to tell anybody anything about what you saw. That was all private to all of you. So don't worry. Nobody else would have seen. I think I think even Prophetess didn't really see much of the individual dreams so much as sparked them. But, you know, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I know that they probably still they probably still weren't the best dreams you've ever had. Yeah, she should get a new fucking process. I'm going to take five pancakes. Yeah. No, I, I made lots. Take take however many you need. And, like, lather it with syrup and butter. Mm. That makes Queen Bee smile. I'm just going to take, like, two or three and just pause on a couple on his plate. Karen just looks confused at everybody because she did not have a dream like this. <laughs> um, she said, I, I dreamed about riding a cosmic sheep through the pastures of space. I, I, I'm sorry that you all seem to have had much worse dreams. Oh, that's... Yeah, well, at least for me, it was about my powers, so I guess that makes sense. Mm. You didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody wants honey? I would also like to point out that um, Valerie has not transformed yet, but she did put on all of her makeup before coming out to see everyone and eat breakfast. Mm-hmm. Is she okay with Connie seeing? Uh, Yeah. I don't think Connie is someone that she would expect to like know who Valerie Pierce is. Or recorded or anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jaden's probably like eating pancakes and then looks around and notices that Lucia hadn't come out yet. So he's gonna, after finishing off his pancakes, he's put a few more pancakes on his plate and then walk over to the little room that Lucia um claimed and like knock against the wall. Um, Lucia like finally gets up, like lets her hair out because you know it's morning. That's the first step. Um, then walks over and just kind of like sticks her head out. Doesn't say anything, just looks up at you. <laughs> he's kind of holds up the plate and he's got like a bottle of syrup and a small bit of butter as well on the side. It's like pancakes. She takes it first um, and is like thinks about just like retreating, but decides to just like finally come all the way out and just like, thanks. You're welcome. High feeling. I'm fine. I'm just tired in the morning. I'm like one of those people that like, I have to like, it takes time for me to wake up, you know? <laughs> I didn't really sleep that well. Yeah. Is uh, Lucia sitting with everybody? Um. Yeah, Lucia's going to sit next to Queen Bee because Queen Bee has honey. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then Angie's going to be like, yeah, we all had a fucked up dream too. But she's like, sorry, she's not snapping at her. She's like, I'm pissed about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, and then the way that Angie does. <laughs> yeah, she's just perpetually angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now over uh, Trixie's stack of pancakes, there's a little circle of bees that are just raining honey, and they're not really stopping because Queen Bee is not fully paying attention, so I hope you like it with a lot of honey. <laughs> That's totally fine. Pour it down, pour it down. <laughs> Lucia wants honey with side of pancakes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I think I think even as she's eating, she like at one point just like lifts it up towards one of the bees and then eats it like mm-hmm. <laughs> just um but she's she's fine. As she eats, she starts to like warm up a bit, but every now and then she's just kind of staring off into space. But she's gonna be okay. Yeah, I think during this Connie is leaving you be to eat by yourselves for a little bit, just so y'all can process your emotions via food for a bit. Mm-hmm. Am I hungry or am I depressed? Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Internal question. I definitely have like chipmunk cheeks going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, do we clear any condition? I mean, we had an awful sleep now to think about it. That's a silly question. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that you can clear a condition each if you want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to keep insecure because I feel like that definitely fits with the dream. I'm clearing guilty, but keeping angry. I removed insecure, but I'm also tempted to pick angry. (laughs) (laughs) You can if you want. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, because in a way, having an emotional dream like that can be cathartic, but it is also a terrible dream and you can still be angry about that. Yeah, I think it's directed to the person who did the dream. Yeah, no, fair. 
It's on sight, prophetess. That's what she's thinking. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> on sight. Prophesize this. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Y'all have your breakfast, and when Connie comes back in, they say, like, how y'all feeling at this point again i hope you'll be okay to to move out pretty soon because we do still have a lot of labyrinth ahead of us out there um and she has her face twisted because uh she ate a bunch of pancakes with syrup and then she went to drink some orange juice and that like just the taste oh, didn't no. mix very well oh, so it's God. just like <laughs> oh gross <laughs> but she still does it she still drinks the whole thing Karen looks at you like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she t- she takes a big swig of orange juice. <laughs> oh, God. Of course, Karen's Karen invincible. Ew. I wonder why. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Above game. Hmm. <laughs> now I'm ready. The sooner we can get going and get to the scent of this labyrinth, the sooner we can start practicing and have dinner that I'm, I'm assuming is going to be... A little bit better than just s'mores, because now that I think about it, we just ate s'mores for dinner. <laughs> That's sad. Uh... Like, only s'mores. Oh, yeah, true. I, I think and... I forgot to say that uh, Connie also had vegan sausages for real. Okay. <laughs> I had that on my list, I just forgot to say <laughs> it. <Whether> we <laughs> ate them or not. Yeah, that's true. I think teenagers, <laughs> debatable. <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> Maybe y'all enjoyed the s'mores too much and forgot. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And... Valerie is also going to transform now. We've had time to wake up and get ready. All right. Yeah, everybody can take their transformation shifts now and let me know what those are. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Isn't that always the question? Um, I'm going to bump up Superior. And I don't think we need to defend anyone, so I think I'm going to reduce defend. Oh, sure. Maybe after the night that you've had, you're in self-preservation mode. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to shift down superior for the first time ever. Ooh. I'm not feeling great on the inside. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to bump up freak because that was freaky. Mm-hmm. I bumped up danger and lowered mundane. All right. I'm bumping up danger and down savior because Vivi feels dangerous, maybe mm-hmm. too too dangerous. I think so. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, In that case, uh, y'all definitely shaken, but ready to take on the day, at least. Head out of the structure. Jaden, are you just leaving it there, or are you taking it down? Yeah, he's going to take it down. He's going to, like, I think he starts leaving and goes, oh, wait, hold on. And he quickly rushes back and places a hand on it, and it just kind of, like, crumbles down into, like, um, just saw you on grains, like, small bits of rock. Yeah. (laughs) Don't want to mess with the environment and leave it like that too much. Oh yeah, nothing but footprints. So y'all head out into the labyrinth for today, and who wants to be our first navigator for this chunk of the <laughs> trip? Uh, I'll go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we will do our trials of the labyrinth questions as you you head into the labyrinth. You roll two d six and add or subtract based on the following conditions. Is the navigator calm, not in any obvious danger, and had time to think about the path ahead? No. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Does the navigator have no conditions marked? No. (laughs) She does. She's angry. Mm. There thankfully is no threat or rival in the immediate vicinity. Although, well, no, you're not shaken by an obstacle, so I won't subtract one for that one. And you don't have three or more conditions marked, so you'll just make a flat 2d6 roll for this. Okay. Hey, not bad. Not bad, a nine. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. All right, so I will pick two obstacles from the list for you, and you will get to choose one with no bonuses. Okay. Well, I think I know which one I want (laughs) to try, too. (laughs) Um, So I will give you either a bear (laughs) or (laughs) labyrinth guardian. Hmm. Let's do the bear. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Let's do it. I was hoping we'd get this one at some point. Okay, so as you're trekking along through the woods, Angie is, I guess, stomped up to the lead, uh, driven by the desire to punch Prophetess, I guess. Focus my anger. (laughs) 
Yep, yep. <laughs> Focus some anger, just fuck. Yeah, and I, I think uh, as you make your way through the underbrush, you're maybe stomping a little bit more than you mean to, um, and making more noise going through, like, the twigs and dirt and whatnot. And you realize after a little while that the noise is starting to attract some more noise heading in your direction. There's some large shuffling sounds, let's say, coming from over a nearby ridge and you don't see anything yet but you hear a soft growling sound okay so she's uh she's stomping forward she's a woman with a plan and she hears the growling and she stops and then puts up her fists and you hear another growl this time a little bit louder <sighs> oh um what is it do you run do we stay what do we do Let's prepare our powers just in case. Good call. Yeah, you have some open space around you that you could run away if you need to. Um, the path before you isn't narrow, but yeah. the growling is coming from nearby over a very nearby <sighs> ridge. Can I, I'm going to roll for burn like immediately. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah. Don't bears only see you if you move? We Maybe we should stand still. Do we? Is that bears? I, I Do think we that's know it's T-Rexes. That was oh. bad. Okay. <laughs> Oh, did you get a five? Oh, no. Yeah. Oof. It's fine. Mm. It's fine, everyone. I'm totally fine. Right. Is team allowed to help with burn rolls? I wouldn't be against it, but I don't know. You do have four teams still. Because otherwise, Jaden's going to take three conditions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, we should help. I don't, I don't know how I could help. Uh, I'll do like a pep talk. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jaden. Game face. Okay. Yeah, maybe you see that Jaden still looks like kind of shaken from earlier. Okay, wait, that, that's a six. I mean, let's still six, wait. Uh, okay. Yeah, somebody else still needs to, okay. somebody yeah. else needs to back this pep talk up. Okay, Queen Bee turns toward Jaden. She sees she he's a bit, uh, she can say, hey, let's breathe together, okay? One, two, three, in, out. Okay, in, out. <sighs> okay. We can do this. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that that will bring you up to a seven. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you'll still have two team in the pool. Okay. <laughs> so you get to mark one condition and you'll take three burn. So should we start tiptoeing quietly? I don't... Isn't it T-Rexes that can see you when you move? I think we should beat it up. <laughs> uh, Whoa. Are, I, you, are you sure? If, if it's a... If it's just a bear that was probably minding its own business before a bear um, in a magic labyrinth or whatever you know she's got a point i mean the labyrinth was literally made of bits of the forest i mean a bear literally could have just been minding its business and ended up here yes but uh, a bear's business is mostly eating bees so i have an issue with that <laughs> see queen bee agrees with me we have to fight it yeah we have to deal with this bear's beesness was that was that a pun? Mm. <laughs> that was good, Trixie. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe if we make enough puns, we'll show it that we're calm enough that we're cool. Maybe we can just scare it away. It's true. Bears are often more scared of humans than humans are of them. So this bear should be super afraid of super idols. So we'll just flex a little bit. And worse comes to worse, Bane Raven just punches a bear in the nose. No biggie. <laughs> yeah, I like that plan. Let's do it. And as you say, let's do it, there is another growl from over the ridge, and you see some fuzzy black ears poke up over the top of the ridge as the head of this bear starts to come into view. You can see that it is a very large black bear, and it's got its eyes set on all of you. Vivi is going to step forward, and she's going to use her much maligned body transmutation power, and she's going to make herself bigger, like 10 feet tall and wave her arms and go, oh, I'm, I'm big and, and scary. Go, 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 go away. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I like this. <laughs> All right. I guess, is that just unleash your powers or is, are you, or are you defending the group or? <laughs> I, I was thinking that would be provoke someone. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'd, I'd let that be a provoke. Sort of, kind of <laughs> provoke yeah. something. Trying to provoke it to run away. Yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, you get to roll superior on that then. 
Oh! <laughs> Another five. Wow, that was... Just a plus starting two. off great. <laughs> okay, I don't need to use a team point. I'm going to use boost, which is one of my abilities. Ooh. Ooh. Um, spend one burn to supercharge your teammate's efforts with your powers. Give them a plus one bonus to their roll, as if you had spent a team point from the pool. Oh, okay. Um, and what it kind of looks like is SCVB getting large and trying to seem as terrifying as possible. Jaden kind of like lightly taps the ground with his foot and the ground just behind Vivi kind of mimics her shape but <laughs> slightly larger to add a bit more um cast a bit more of a shadow over this bear as well to add to the scariness <laughs> of this whole situation <laughs> for the bear hopefully sure <laughs> okay so queen bee just grabs the skillet from uh, connie and just starts slamming it and making noise and yelling against the bear oh sure <laughs> So that will bring you up to a seven on provoke someone. So let's see. Are they going to stumble, error, or overreact? Let's see. I'd also like to say that I think this is this is definitely not something Valerie <laughs> is practiced doing. So she doesn't just look like a bigger version of Valerie. It, it's kind of badly proportioned. And like I, I, I'm imagining like a cartoon character with bigger hands and feet. It's just it doesn't look oh, good. Goodness. This is why she doesn't do this. <laughs> For some reason, I, when you were like, it's not good, I was imagining Valerie as one of those, like, blow-up flimsy things, like, when somebody's advertising, like, a car sale. Yeah. And just, like, swings. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, that, yeah, cool. that, that's much nicer. I was thinking more Janjiito. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, never mind. Oh, God. I, I, I was thinking more, like, a Luffy or, like, Kamala Khan, uh, Ms. Marvel type oh, thing. Oh, yeah, Ms. Yeah. Yeah. Marvel. <laughs> You can win the road dark route. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, it, I was thinking ending up, you know, looking like, I don't know, like Mickey Mouse with long, skinny arms and big yeah. hands and feet and a head. But that would, if that was an actual person, that would look terrifying. <laughs> <as Okay>. well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, th I'm going to get to this in a, in a slightly roundabout way, but... <laughs> I'm going to choose that they err and you gain a critical opportunity. Um, but what this bear is going to do actually is... You said you're about 10 feet tall right now? Yes. So actually, I'm going to quickly t take a look at how big a bear is when they rear up on their back legs. <laughs> how tall bears? Hey, hey, Google, how tall is bear? <laughs> how tall is bear? Eight feet. Oh, not so, not too much shorter then. <laughs> it's a grizzly, but well, whatever. It's I'm imagining something about the size of a grizzly. So this bear definitely does look startled at your sudden growth in size and the noise um, and looks very like unsure of what's going on. But as they start to look kind of uncertain and hesitate, they start to rear up on their hind legs to make themselves look more intimidating. And you notice something you didn't quite notice before from the previous angle. This bear is actually wearing a tutu. <laughs> like, a, again, like kind of a cartoon oh, tutu. No. <laughs> Yeah, and as they rear up, they look at you in the eyes and they look confused, but also they take a sec and then they start to spin on point with one claw in the air. And I think they are inviting you to a dance battle. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and your critical opportunity is going to be that this bear is thrown off balance, so you're probably going to have an advantage in this competition. I'll dance with them. <laughs> yes, d dancers, the dancers of the group are well, more mm -hmm. than welcome to join in. Oh, yeah. Or everybody is, really. <laughs> I think Jaden, when Jaden sees the tutu and then starts seeing the bear dancing, he's going to be like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> he's he's going to sit down and <laughs> let the dancers do their, do their thing. <laughs> yeah, Lucia's going to like plop down next to Jaden. She like reaches into her bag and takes out like more snacks, just rips a bag open and starts shooting. <laughs> uh, Valerie is confused, but like goes goes back to her normal size. So, uh, okay. Vivi, come sit down. <laughs> okay, yeah. Look, looks at Queen Bee and Bane Raven, like, pleadingly. And then, actually, as you do that, the bear like, growls in, like, <sighs> uh, in frustration, like... <sighs> Like, they wanted to dance against you because you were the one who confronted it. Oh, oh okay. Um, I think... <laughs> this bear's like, no, I'm your opponent. Yeah. You're my rival. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> I mean, the dancers are welcome Angie, to join in, but rival spot. <laughs> Vivi is the main opponent in, in their eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can I try to uh, provoke the bear against me? Sure, if you want to. <laughs> Hell yeah, bull versus bear. Bull versus bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you got an eight on that. I think in that case, probably since you want to gain its attention, I'll give you, uh, they overreact and you gain inf- influence over them. <laughs> okay. So what do you do to get this bear to overreact? I'm going to, I'm just going to oversell it. I'm going to do like, you know, backflip over Vivi. So I'm like standing right in front of her and be like, your battle's with me. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the bear looks like determined and clenches, the, uh, clenches their claws. I'm just like, oh, really? <laughs> Doesn't yeah. say that, but that's the, that's the vibe. Yeah, that's the vibe. And I'm going to add to Angie's character sheet. I have influence over a bear. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So you will have a plus one advantage against this bear. Perfect. And bear's interested in fighting me. Yes. Now the bear is starting to do some more like pirouettes and big jumps that like make the forest floor shake underneath you. And they probably shake over some of your snacks, to be honest, uh, Lucia. Uh, there's definitely a moment where I actually just pause to watch because, like, the bear's form's really good. <laughs> like, they are, actually. It's yeah. Impressive. Are you classically trained? And the bear actually nods when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting distracted. I'm gonna directly gauge threat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> you get to roll danger. Okay. Alright, so you got a nine on that. It's another hit. <laughs> So you get to choose one from the directly engaged threat list. Well, you, hold on, it's it's a ten because you have influence, right? Oh yeah, oh, true. It right, is. I just oh. sorry. Thank you. My my goldfish brain is terrible sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, Dana. Yes, yes. You got you had influence over the bear, so you do get a ten. So you get to pick two off of uh, directly engaged threat. Okay, um, I am going to resist or avoid their blows, and then. Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you go absolutely toe to toe with this bear. Classically trained. Where do they think you went to school? <laughs> yeah. You've been doing this since you were almost a literal baby. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's always wanted a dancer child. I say as I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to show off some of your like actual ballet moves here, since that seems to be the vibe. Yeah. And again, as with some of your other battles with, like, um, Labyrinth Idol Guardians, you have some, like, Swan Lake piped in in the background during all of this. Yeah, just out of nowhere. But I did Swan Lake in grade seven, so I'm ready. Mm Mm-hmm. By the end of the performance, you absolutely sell that you are the tragic swan figure and the bear just cannot keep up. They raise a, a claw to their forehead and look dramatic and they swoon and fall to the forest floor in a suitably <laughs> dramatic fashion. Uh, Vivi's just clapping at all of this. Yeah. In- impressive <laughs> on everyone's part. And uh, Angie does like a very flourishing bow. And then like <laughs> is a good sportsman so she also gestures to the bear so that people can applaud the bear as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yay bear. Yeah, the, the bear gets up yeah. and, and bows very politely. Yeah. Or light applause. Jane is definitely applauding. <laughs> I'm going to have to commission some fan art about this. I'm going to have to commission <laughs> some fan art. <laughs> and after they bow, the bear actually um, shapeshifts back into a person. They're detransforming out of their idol form. And you, you see a short, spunky looking girl with kind of like wild black hair. And uh, she's wearing like these little like like a cat ear headband, but with bear ears on the top of her head. Aww. And she gives you a big Aww. grin. I love her. She's cute. Good job. Y'all are my favorite idols I've danced against so far. Thank you so much. That was great. Oh, thank you. I would absolutely love to dance with you all again. You'd very hurry up for now, though. I think I saw another couple of groups running through ahead of you. <gasps> Let's go. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Don't mention it. And good luck. Yeah, I, we scramble up. <laughs> yeah, and she claps <laughs> for you as you all head off into the rest of the labyrinth. You can do it. Uh, yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, keep running. And uh, yeah, I have a marriage to secure with my dance idol. So it has, I have to be number one. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> everyone happy new year i hope you all enjoyed your holidays if you were able to and then you hung on as best you could if you weren't which is totally understandable it's again a, a giant hellscape out there so please hang in there as best you can either way i i do hope that this episode at least is an enjoyable time for you uh it's packed with a bunch of different stuff to say the least it, especially in terms of like not just things that happen but just tones like there's a bunch of Sweet stuff, there's a bunch of funny stuff, there's action, there's th all th there's random tangents, there's, there's a lot. Um, and honestly, some of our favorite scenes of the arc are in this one. I know <laughs> I know the cast, at least, uh, and me th for that matter, are big fans of the dancing bear scene in particular. So I decided I wanted to make that one a little extra special. Uh, one of our friends of the show, Fabi Garza, happens to be a big fan of bear girls, and she plays... Uh, several bear-related characters in different AP podcasts, um, including the wonderful Eidolon Playtest, the fabulous Otherware Nova Squad, and the inimitable Moon Harbor Heroes. So when I realized we had a bear girl coming up in an episode, I knew that would be a fun cameo to have Fabi come in and do. So thank you very much, Fabi, for coming in and doing this on short notice for us. <laughs> I really hope that we can get this character back at some point for more than just a cameo appearance, because she is adorable. So, fingers crossed. Mm. And as always, I am also going to remind you about the existence of our Patreon. Yes, you too can help Super Idols RPG um, pay for the costs of uh, editing and transcription and uh, web hosting and <laughs> a whole bunch of other stuff. Music licensing, yes. <laughs> um, so, if you want to help us out in that regard, you can pledge uh, $1 or more per month to get a bunch of extra audio for a bunch of different episodes, including before and after session talk for, for various episodes. For this one in particular, you can hear our end of session for this session, as well as some other after session talk, and that alone is like a good extra, like 15 minutes of extra audio by itself. So combine that with most of the other episodes having something similar, and you got a, you got a lot for just like a dollar, basically. It's a pretty, a pretty good deal, I think. Check it out. And if you're feeling a little extra generous, you wanna go for $5 a month, maybe, you can also get the uncut version of every episode. Uh, this one in particular, there are a few a few decent chunks of it that got cut out, including there's a lot of table talk uh, for a thing near the end that you'll hear later on. You'll probably be able to tell what it is. Um, the dream sequences were also slightly reordered and edited um, accordingly. Um, the most key difference, I think, is that Connie's warning to the group before they go to sleep was actually entirely missing from the original recording. We actually added that as a pickup in our recording for episode 29, because uh, by that point I had decided it did not make sense for Connie to not tell the group about the dreams beforehand. She's far too responsible and empathetic not to, so <laughs> we definitely wanted to add that in. So yeah, so definitely a few key differences you can hear in this month's uncut episode. If you're very curious about our production process. Also, if you're a $5 Patreon subscriber, you get your name shouted out here in the Metal Bits on occasion. In this episode, I'm going to give a shout out to Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, Sensei1477, Misty, Rowan B, Tanner S, Eric Kune, Chris T, and Liv C. Thank you all so, so much as always for supporting the show. Again, that there's a lot that your, that your contributions are going towards and we really, really appreciate it. Mm. All right, and I think that is all for me for this middle bit. It's a long episode as is, so I didn't want to run it too long. <laughs> uh, be sure to check out this week's Be Gay Roll Dice ad. It's for Dice Will Roll, the Audioverse award-winning, self-described gayest Pathfinder podcast on the planet, and also huge spearheads for the, uh, the pa Paizo accountability movement, which... Fucking Paizo, come on. If you don't know, um... <laughs> I I'm not going to get into it because, again, I want to keep this short, but, like... 
Paizo, get your shit together. <laughs> anyway. Thank you all very much, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you all again another, another time. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Come listen to Dice for Roll, the gayest Pathfinder podcast on the planet. We ask the hard questions like, Is it morally acceptable to kiss a goblin? Is it cool to use spell slots to warm up leftovers? Would the gods be mad if I wrote slash fic about them? We're a group of four friends who play Pathfinder 2nd Edition every week and go on adventures like none other. We've just launched our brand new season, Extinction Curse, which follows the adventures of the Circus of Wayward Wonders, as they put on the greatest show in all of Galarian and uncover ancient secrets and long-forgotten foes from a bygone era. If you like circuses, clowns, and a little bit of magic, come check us out, and make sure that no matter what, you keep it rolling. I think as, as we leave, Valerie is like, aren't, aren't you glad we didn't try to fight them? I mean, like, a little. I'll save my punching for Prophetess. <laughs> With that, um, Trixie leans over to Vivi and is just like, that's why we wanted her to fight the bear. Get it out uh, of her system. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, if, it still would have felt really bad if it was if, if they were just a bear. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess that's valid, but like... <sighs> I just, I hope she doesn't actually punch Prophetess, but who knows? We'll see when we get there. All right. <laughs> so who wants All to right. take their turn as the navigator next? I'll go ahead. All right. Well, I still don't have any conditions. All right. Um, after that, how do you feel? Are you calm, not in any obvious danger, and had time to think about the path ahead? I think we, we ran off in such a rush. I don't think we had time to think about the path ahead. Mm, fair. But you do have no conditions marked, so that'll give you a plus one. Mm -hmm. There is no threat or rival in the vicinity, but that definitely is getting closer since you seem to be behind some of the other groups coming up here. But uh, not close enough to subtract one off of that, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're shaken by that previous obstacle. <laughs> no, that went better than expected. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so you'll get a plus one on this. Uh, ten. Nice. Sweet. That is a ten. All right, so you get to pick uh, any obstacle on the list, and you'll get a plus one on your first move against it. Oh gosh, there's some some options that I really am torn between. Um, mm. But uh, I think I have to say Sagittaria here. Oh, oh okay. Hell I wasn't yeah. sure if we'd do them last or if they would come up during this, but uh, I will definitely take it now. <laughs> I know. I figured they they would they would come up, but I just want to make sure that. Yeah, they would come up regardless. <laughs> But yeah, mm -hmm. no, th I think this is a good time for them. Uh, especially with, with Vivi leading. So uh, you're, you're kind of motoring through the woods now that you know that you're close to some people and you know that you don't want to be behind anybody if you want to get all the best food and all the best practice. Is there anything that you're talking about while you're running or you're just running? Okay, if we, if we run into another animal, just assume that it's going to be a dance battle. <laughs> Will do. It makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's been the case twice. Is there going to be some like zoo themed group debuting soon? Because like there was the bird, there was this bear. Like is there's that a new trend? There's the cat sort mm -hmm. of. There's a cat. That'd be pretty cool. Well, at least like that horse girl from Sagittaria has a place to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, geez, I, I mean. mean I hope we don't run into them. Yeah, that would suck. Uh, speak of the devil, as you run further through the woods, you can hear uh, some clip-clop, clip-clopping ahead of you in, in the underbrush, uh, running through the woods ahead. Please don't tell me oh, they're riding this God. girl in her horse form. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we've mentioned the horse girl, Jaden like flinches, and at the sound of the hooves against the ground... He's already ready to fight. He's like, where are they? I just think of, like, the Kill Bill sirens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leave this one to me. <laughs> it's that, but it's also, like, Captain Hook and the crocodile with the TikTok. It's like, it's yes. Yes. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so as you rush forward, you notice that there's a split in the path. And you're not really in a position to think about which split you're taking. Uh, so you just take the first one that you get to. And as you're running through the woods, you can see the other path across a gap between like 
you in the earth. And as you run faster and you try to catch up, you can see on the other side of the path, you see Sagittaria running on the left-hand side of the path on the other side. And you can see that uh, the pony is running through the underbrush, being <laughs> ridden by the <laughs> one girl on their team who doesn't have any powers, the gymnastics girl. A sister Spectacular, her name was. And the rest of them, uh, you've got Rosette, who is flying on her, like, angel wings. You have Empath Esquire, the kind of revolutionary war-type uniform girl with the monocle. And she is carrying Cameron in her arms, like Princess carrying him with her. <laughs> also, isn't she like a Shetland pony? They're not very tall. <laughs> They're not very tall. That's why. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like, that's why she can only hold one person. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can see clearing brush at the front of the group is Tyra in her like crystalline, willowy idol form, forming crystal and like pushing branches and brush and leaves out of the way with her kind of spidery crystal fingers. Oh, yes. Um, and sorry, I missed, um, of course, the most important one. Um, we have Ashley, who is flying not far behind her on a cloud of pixie dust. So Tyra is at the very front of the group using her crystal arms to clear things out. Like she is sort of the machete yeah. of the group. Basically, yeah. So they have a clear path ahead so they don't have to slow down. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um... Would you say that there's a light that's, like, refracting off of these crystals? Oh, sure, yeah, there's still artificial light everywhere in this labyrinth, so th there's definitely, like, uh, reflections going off from there. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna unleash my powers, and I'm going to try to, like, bend and twist that light so, like, intensely that it, it basically is like a flashbang, but only around Sagittaria. Ooh, sure. I'm going to call that a directly engaged... A, wait, is that a directly engaged threat? Um, yeah, because they're they're threatening to get ahead of you. Okay, fair, 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 fair. That's very fair. Okay. Um, I got a 10! Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah. So you get to uh, pick two. So <laughs> they're not exactly throwing blows at you, but the blow in this case is more like they're gaining ground ahead of you. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is definitely an opportunity for us. Like, we're gonna really, like, power ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and then... Okay, this is such a strange question. Mm-hmm. Miss, Miss Horse Gal, how, like, sentient is she when she's in her horse? Like, okay, take the bear, for example. The bear couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she can't... It's basically the same situation. Can't yeah. talk in that form, but has full human sentience. Okay, fair, 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 yeah, cool. Um, can I still frighten her, though? Can I, like, make yeah, her, sure. like, rear up and, like, freak out and basically yeah. split the group? Oh, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. There's also create an opportunity for your allies. So oh, I sure. was going to say create an opportunity for our allies, basically for us to, like, race ahead of them. Oh, and then I see. impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Oh, okay. And that does give me a nice opportunity to let them um, attack back afterwards. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, if they can keep up. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> no, I, li I like this, though. <laughs> yeah, you, you do that. You Your light refracts off of the crystals and flashbangs in Tyra's eyes, and she goes, ah, and pulls her, like, large crystal arm back, and she's got these, like, large spidery crystal fingers as well that make a shape in front of the pony's face that throws them off, and uh, she rears up in startlement <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. manages to throw Sister Spectacular, who runs into, like, and pulls down Ashley and Rosette, who in turn lead to uh, Esquire, like, having to stop before running into them. So they all have a great little pile-up that you're able to use to get some ground there. Go, 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 now, go. <laughs> Trixie's just booking it. Yeah, and they see you now, so they're, they're not happy with you, for sure. As we run by, I, like, do a little raspberry, I, like, stick my tongue out, like, meh, and keep going. <laughs> so, Vivi does have a plus one in this encounter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you want to cut down some trees or something on our way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to take a cue from them and just, like, create two swords and start cutting a path in front of us for the whole group, just like she was with her powers. 
Sure. That, that is definitely more of an unleash your powers roll, I think. And you'll get a plus yeah. one on that. I'm reshaping my environment, literally. And another ten! Oh. Yeah! Oh, Very good. good. Nice. <laughs> Alright, so you, you basically do that exactly perfectly. In contrast to your dream from earlier, your swords are sharp, but they aim true, and they cut down not people, but the trees in your way, and you're using them to help rather than harm. Yeah, there was definitely a hesitation to attack them directly. Mm -hmm. So this is what Vivi is focusing on instead. Yeah, I think it's going to work very well for you. And you, you definitely gain uh, a good deal more ground that way. Uh, and you don't feel too bad about cutting down the trees, because these are like magical labyrinth trees anyway, so they... <laughs> Not really real trees. Do we all get to do something? I don't. I don't know if said a terrorist is gonna react yet or not. Uh, I think at this point you've had two turns, so I think Sagittarius will get a turn in here as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Especially since we still need to show that Lucia did not resist or avoid their blows. <laughs> Teehee. <laughs> in retaliation for both the flashbang and for the incorrigible raspberry. Tyra is going to thrust out both her hands with fingers splayed and her crystalline fingers are going to extend out across the gap towards you, Lucia. And they're going to try and like grab you with these fingers and pull you across to their side. Can I try to defend? Yeah, definitely. Okay. How does that work with influence if I'm defending Lucia? Ah. Uh yeah, I think that'll, that'll you'll get your plus one. And we don't use influence as often as we should in this way, so I'm going to let it happen regardless. <laughs> cool. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and you only have one team um, point. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use boost to boost the attempt of defending Lucia to bump up to a six, and then we just need a team point to bump up to seven to at least hit, if everyone's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm down. Okay. And I think what that kind of looks like is um, as these fingers are reaching out to grab Lucia, pillars of earth start like coming out of the ground and like literally becoming walls in front of each individual finger, but you can't get to all of them. So of course, um, whoever uses the next team point to bump up to seven does with the rest. I could send a bunch of bees to distract Tyra. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so as uh, these walls are coming up and not all the fingers are able to get past them, some of them are still getting around the wall, but suddenly a swarm of bees happens to swirl up on the opposite side path and get in Tyra's perfect little face. Yeah, you think I could do that? It's what she to say. Ooh, I am going to mark potential. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't think you do if you're if this is being bumped up to a mixed success. Oh crap! I'll just remove uh, sorry that. to say. <laughs> uh, so that case on a seven to nine, uh, you do still expose yourself to danger and, or escalate the situation, but you you also get to either add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. Um, I'll expose myself to danger because don't want to escalate. And uh, I will add a team to the pool. All right. If we don't have a visual for how that's happening, I think I can, can suggest a good one. Oh, sure. Which is that uh, Bane Raven just picks Lucia up, Princess Carrie style, and like jumps out of the way with her. Yeah, <laughs> to even further mirror what's it. going on on the <laughs> other side. Oh, yes. my goodness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the the only drawback that happens is as you as you leap away with Lucia, some of these fingers they're very they are still crystalline and they're still very sharp, um, and they they slash across the the arm of your jacket, um, and you can take a condition to represent that. Oh, uh, hmm. insecure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Ooh, that's two conditions. <laughs> okay. Sagittarius has taken their turn. So uh, y'all are free to, like, make a surge ahead or make another move against them, whatever you want. Well, first I want to roll for burn. <laughs> um, sure. And hope for the best. Uh, with my luck. But I'm not, I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to jinx myself, but... Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you do take another condition, but you do get three more burn. Yeah, that's fine. It looks like now you have four burn. 
I can only have a max of three. You can only ever have a max of three. Oh, so when you re-roll, it disappears and just get three again. Oh, never mind then. Okay. Yeah. God, I wish that was possible. <laughs> I'll just be <laughs> stacking up on the burn. Um, I think he's going to go guilty because as we're running, he's going <sighs> to... I'm really sorry. And as they're running, he's going to turn to Lucia. Should I go with water, wind or earth? I don't want to go with fire because it might hurt them. And just... Lucia gets to choose what flavor this is going to look like. <laughs> Lucia, like, in Amy's <laughs> arms, um, mm, do, do wind. Okay, and he's going to, he's still running, he'll turn and start, like, keep running backwards, and he's just going to take in a deep breath and blow, and as he does, it's just, like, almost hurricane, hurricane speed winds to knock them as far back down the path they went as possible and I'm going to use overcharge it automatically take my 10 plus and All release right. um, and um, use uh, release uh, unleash my powers to make get a 10 plus right. on that alright so yeah I think that just creates like a basically a wall of wind that keeps them from moving forward and giving you a further lead against them yeah and he, he just keeps blowing it's his lung capacity should have it should have ended ages ago but he just keeps going as he's running backwards to keep up with everyone I think uh, what I'm what I'm going to do as you're, you're moving you're definitely moving further ahead if you get one more like successful move against them I'm gonna say you've successfully like outrun them like far enough to not worry about it for a, a while anymore but for now I'm gonna have their next attack back against you is you seem to be making some good strides ahead you're almost even losing sight of them but then you hear some whizzing and whooshing behind you and you see some of Rosette's angel feathers rushing across towards you and they are propelled by some of Ashley's pixie dust and what they're going to do is they're shooting overhead of you and whizzing overhead like they're not shooting at you but they are raining down this pixie dust on you and you're going to start feeling more fatigued if you don't shake this off okay <laughs> And I'm going to say what would be the best to represent this. Maybe it takes the form of, like, your next move that you're going to take against the group will be at a minus one. Ooh, Ooh okay. Because your movements are getting more sluggish. Could could I use moat? Oh, yeah. It's one of my flares. Um, spend one burn to create a barrier that will hold back threats as long as you keep attention on it. Would this okay. count as a threat I can make a barrier against? I think so. Let me just read the text of that. Hmm. Well, they are your main rivals, so I would count that as a particularly powerful set of enemies. Yeah, I don't think I have enough to... Yeah, I can't spend enough. I only have one burn. Okay, never mind then. Hmm. I mean, you could spend the one burn, but it would mean the moat doesn't last very long, I think. Yeah, I'll do that then. Okay. Every little helps, you know? Uh, so that's not affected by rolls, so you can just do that. I think when he notices this like weird dust floating down from the sky, he kind of looks up and sees um, the feathers and the uh, pixie dust being dropped down on us and starts to notice that he's feeling a bit more sluggish than usual and puts two and two together. And I think what he kind of does is he stops blowing and um, turns about, about faces again, so he's running forward like normal. And you kind of see like the leaves and the brush around shake a little and you notice that little droplets of dew and water droplets come off of them and coalesce just above us and it's basically like a sheet of water is floating above us and uh, at least some of the dust is getting like absorbed in the water so it doesn't actually land and hit us yeah so i'm gonna say that temporarily negates that negative in that case and he just got his hands up in the air as he's running to keep <laughs> he has to concentrate yeah. on the barrier to keep it up yeah but in order to keep this going uh yeah Jaden is going to have to be very awkwardly running backward and he is going to be vulnerable in every other way <laughs> yep <laughs> Okay, let's see. Right now, they are behind. Like, we are running ahead, and they are behind on that. And there's, uh, like, a wedge between us, right? Yeah, there's basically, like, a chasm. Okay. Like, not a very deep one, but there's a chasm between the two paths. Perfect. Okay. While Jaden is keeping the stuff from eating us, I'm gonna try and get my bees to just push it back against them. The whole dew wall? Yes. I'm gonna make, like, a big wall of bees... And if it works right, I might get the glow on. Let's see if I can unleash my powers. Okay. Or is this an idea I can engage? 
Uh, it depends. I guess, are you trying to actually attack them with this wall or just, again, like, keep them back? I'd like to send the, the pixie dust on them. Uh, okay. I'll call that a, um, a directly engaged threat then. Okay. Because you're trying to actually, like, directly affect them and not just keep them at bay. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so that is an 11. You get to pick two. Okay, so... I'm going to resist to avoid the blows, of course, and take something from them. I don't think I can take consciousness, but I can certainly slow them down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think take something from them would correspond to, like, the... You can take their, like... <laughs> their energy from them with the pixie dust. Okay, so I form a wall of bees that starts to faintly glow and the glow just trumps in time. The whole wall pushes ahead and slumps the pixie dust onto them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and I think at, at that point they get like a big poof of their own medicine in their face uh, and also this uh, really nice uh, pretty sparkly mountain dew uh, like actual dew <laughs> in the air around them so you see so they slow and then they just kind of all like peacefully collapse and fall asleep <laughs> on the ground and that gives you the opportunity you need to keep running and move much farther ahead of them and then you don't have to worry about them after a while oh, okay that was that was great. But... That was a lot. That was a lot. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good job, yeah, um, everyone. I'm, I'm real proud of all of you, though. That was some quick thinking and some quick some quick powers. Oh, you know, it's just Sagittaria. Yeah, we're used to them now. Come on, let's get out of here so we can get some dinner. Great. The love of my life awaits. <laughs> so that was some pretty impressive dancing back there. Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll have to show me some of those moves. Oh yeah, I totally will. Like, I'm not waltz trained like you, but I took a lot of ballet when I was a kid. I, I could tell. I mean, that so graceful. Oh, thanks. But you too. Thank you. you know. But uh, just so you know, Karen knows about Alan. Oh, okay. Do you? Do you ever feel like you would want to tell everybody else? I. I do sometimes. It maybe not everyone. I I I don't know Lucia like that yet, and uh, I'm honestly pretty worried about telling Jaden because I don't know if he'd be able to keep it secret. Like remember with the whole crimson signal, he yeah he bubbled about it at the first <laughs> like, opportunity. So like tell every adult ever. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of knows, and turns out she's known for a while. Wow, she's more insightful than I thought. Yeah, she's she's full of surprises, that one. Yeah. Uh, what happened with you and Karen? If, well, you, wanna, th if you don't want to no, talk no, about it's just, it. No, I, I, I'd like to talk about it, but it's a long story. There's no time for it right now. It's The fact that she knew is part of it, but it's not the, the main part. Just let, let, Let's just go get you to your boyfriend. <sighs> True words never spoken. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I forgot that you meant conduit when you were talking about marriage and a boyfriend and what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm trying to play up the teenage <laughs> infatuation yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I 100% feel seen, and I hate it. Yeah. I hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is anybody else ha having a recuperating conversation on the way? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think so. Jaden at yeah. this point is just exhausted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sugar rush of the syrup with a side of pancakes is um, wearing off. <laughs> okay, and I think finally you you start to notice as you're as you're moving further through this path, it is starting to get narrower the further you go, and you realize you are starting to hear more footsteps around you in different directions, and you realize that's because you are getting closer to the center of the labyrinth and the paths are starting to converge a bit. Like, they're not on the same path as you, but you can hear out further on other paths, you can hear other footsteps that are quickly rushing towards whatever is in the center of this labyrinth. Come on, everybody, final sprint, let's go. <sighs> okay. All right. Got it. This is like the anime shower. They show all of our determined faces <laughs> in like squares yeah. at the same, yeah. on the screen at the yeah, same no, time. Totally. <laughs> I should also say, by the way, I missed saying this during the Sagittaria run, but 
Karen is in not as good a shape as everybody else, so at a certain point, Connie actually did, like, take her up on her, like, back on her shoulders. So that even further Aww. mirrors, like, what's, what was going on on the other side there. <laughs> this is the shot from the anime opening for this season, where we see all of the characters in a, yes. a you know, sprinting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. totally. Let me mention it, you literally in my Hokodamia, the, the training camp arc was literally the whole opening. <laughs> Yeah, so it was them moving. So what... <laughs> now we're doing the other training arc. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and because we had a really like good like last battle with Sagittarius, I'm not gonna throw you any more curveballs. You run, you sprint, you go as fast as you think you possibly can, and you burst through the last bit of vines in front of you, and you see nestled in the center of this labyrinth, you see a lodge in front of you. You look upon the Grand Star Lodge, which is a, a very inviting looking building. It's built to look like a very large cabin with the angled vaulted ceilings. And there's a lot of like porches and decks out on the front and backs with a lot of seating so that people can sit out and enjoy the mountain air. And you can see the light coming from inside the building is very, very warm and inviting. And there is that picturesque smoke coming out of the chimney at the top. <laughs> And you can see a couple of other groups starting to enter into this space as well. So you get to make one last mad dash to the front door. And we do. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing up like barriers up to block other people, check them up. Lucia's like just making illusions after illusions, just like not even the flash bangs anymore. It's just like Trixie's just throwing her hands out and there's... It looks like a wall is coming at you. It looks like you get lost in a tunnel. I'm sucking the light out of your yeah. like area. And you're similarly getting other blasts of power at you as well. Like, do you see like a burst of flame come up from under you or like an energy wave go past in front of you as well, but you manage to dodge it. Somebody throws a bone at you. <laughs> I catch it. <laughs> what was that? When we get a little closer to the cabin and out of the woods, Valerie is going to create a tunnel that all of them can run through. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over them. Oh, cool. oh, cool. That's a great idea. Yeah, so you make your big glowing purple tunnel that blocks off access from anyone else running to the front door, <laughs> and you speed up to that front door. Oh, wait, wait. Could I also... Uh, I, I, I just think this is fun. And he makes a tunnel. Do you mind if it's like a slide, and then I add water to it to make a water slide, and we just... <laughs> Slide the rest of the way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it goes up at some point and uh, to avoid like an obstacle, and then it has to slide down towards the front door. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Never just slides into the door. <laughs> and the camp staff waiting inside have to like dodge out of the way of this water as it comes <laughs> smashing down into the main lobby. <laughs> oh god, the rugs! <laughs> they start pulling the rugs out from underneath there. And I hop on my feet and I look around to make sure we are actually the first ones. And you are indeed the first ones who made it to the lodge. <laughs> Lucia yes. jumps up. Let's go! Yes! Let's <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. This gush of water aside, um, I think they, they have enough super powered people on staff this weekend that they're able to take care of that fairly mm -hmm. quickly. <laughs> Sorry, Vegas, I didn't, like, I didn't yeah, think about that. I just wanted it sorry, to be like sorry. fun as we got there. Sorry. We um, just wanted to get here quickly. <laughs> yeah, no, fair. The water is, is less friction Did to get here faster. Yeah, no, it's stuff like this happens every year. Uh, <laughs> probably our mistake for putting these rugs here in the first place. <laughs> Lucia's like patting Jaden on the shoulder. Not looking at him, but is patting his shoulder. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> I remembered. And he kind of like opens up his notebook and like, see, right, right here. Oh, yeah, he did good. <sighs> yeah, and as your tunnel dissipates behind you, you do get some other groups that are starting to come in now, and the staff are, like, counting in, like, who's first, who's second, who's third, that kind of thing. And then after that, you get to take a little bit of a breather, and they start to, like, usher you into the main dining area. <laughs> Vivi turns around and kind of goes, I didn't think I could do that. Okay. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, again, I'm, I've just been so proud of you since yesterday, and you just never cease to, to stop impressing. I'm so happy for all of you. Oh, thanks, Connie. Group hug! Thank you. Group hug! Group hug? Okay. Group hug! Okay. <laughs> okay. We do that thing where we, like, pull Lucia mm -hmm. in reluctantly. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on. I think, you know what? There's a move that uh, oh. I, I always forget about, but I think this is the most opportune time. Uh. Team moves on everyone's playbook when you share Ooh, a triumphant yeah, celebration with that. someone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't have that many triumphant celebrations. <laughs> Take it when you can get it. <laughs> I also forgot about the team mechanics. Like when you enter battle against a dangerous foe as a team, you add oh, two yeah. to Damn it, the I always team. Forget that too. We could have had two Damn extra it. team against Sagittaria. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just trying to remember it. that. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Managed. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not good. You did really well that. anyway. Yeah, considering we never use this, we do pretty good. <laughs> it's okay. Mm. There's a lot of moves in this game that are like. Do you remember? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I forget my own moves half the time, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're doing amazing. Okay, I have to ask everyone, do, does anyone look at me with fear in their eyes? <laughs> nope. 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 Perfect. I'm going to take one plus one forwards and mark potential. Okay. So I was like, we're going to squish in the hug. Um, Lucia is like not looking at anybody in the face, not looking at a single person, just... <laughs> Yeah, no, that was um, <clears throat> yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, like we did a good job. Yeah, you know, like the, everybody used their powers, and I, I don't know. I thought, like, I I used mine like for the first time. It was, I yeah, mean, I don't know, like it was I great. It was, I thought it was pretty cool or whatever. I mean, it's stunning. You guys yeah. do cool stuff all the time, so like, <laughs> probably no, wasn't that, that cool. It was uh-huh. so cool. That, totally that cool. That was really cool. Like, it, it was, was really amazingly cool. cool. Like, you knocked Tyler for a loop. Lucia's whole face turns red, and she just like squishes her cheeks and just stays silent. <laughs> <laughs> um. So my team move uh, is when you share a triumphant celebration with someone, I can make them my love or rival immediately to mark potential. Or if they already are my love or rival, I take influence over them and mark potential. I already have influence over Valerie and Queen Bee, <laughs> but I was gonna <laughs> make Valor or um Queen Bee my love. Oh. Instead of Kyle. Ooh. Oh. Or like a BFF love because of our yeah. growing. I mean, we waltzed together. And after you waltz together, like you're basically either best friends or in love. So. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh, and I mark potential. Yes. Yes. I'm so Finally. close. <laughs> I have <said> one more. <laughs> Mine, I have to... Uh, well, I guess I'll ask Angie if she sees me as the person wearing the mask or the person underneath. Uh, the person underneath. Oh, okay. Well, to to clarify that, I see Alan and Queen Bee as two halves of the whole, so to speak. It's just when I look at Queen Bee, I see the entire person, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. Maybe because... She hasn't hidden anything from me, and I know about her Alan identity. That that's just how I see it, I guess. I think that would be the best way to say. Like, I don't think Queen Bee is a performance, and I don't think Alan is Queen Bee's real identity. It's more like I just see them both as my friend. If that makes sense, Aww. yeah. That is really nice. Hmm. Well, when I share a triumphant celebration with someone, uh, give them influence over you, which is, you know, could also be everyone here. But uh, I also can spend one team from the pool to clear one box on my Doom track, which I am going to take the opportunity to do. Vivi would be celebrating with with Trixie. Aww. Yeah, I was about to say it, it might make sense to have Vivi be uh, Trixie's person, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It was like either gonna be that or Jaden. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. For Vivi, I think that's just because, like I said last session, I think she recognizes that Trixie is the person who knew how anxious she was about having to hurt someone, and mm-hmm. it's like, hey, we not not saying it out loud this time, but like, hey, we we did that without killing anyone. Yay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and for Trixie, I, I'll let you pick whichever one you didn't already have influence over before. Um, I didn't have influence over anybody. That's the secret. Yeah. Um, 
but <laughs> oh, I see. But I, I, maybe I'll just give you both of them. <laughs> oh, sure, that works. <laughs> <laughs> And since Valerie was already on your influences, then uh, Valerie would shift your labels. Oh, all right. I think I'd shift your freak up and your mundane down because that was really, like, as I tell you, that like that was really cool. You did cool stuff with your powers. Mm-hmm. Yes, validate me. Thanks, bestie. Um, I shifted the <laughs> <Of course>, bestie. <laughs> so right. true, bestie. So true, bestie. <laughs> All right, so I think that finishes up that lovely round of stuff. You're probably doing this over your very lovely um, buffet meal in this big eating area inside the lodge. I just <laughs> have mm-hmm. loaded up my plate. Oh, God. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so is pile, yeah. pile of stuff. Uh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Just all the really good, like, foods that you would expect on, like, a big trip out into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. a really nice mountain hotel. yeah. Flapjacks, so nice. sausages, mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And also they have all those like weird little pastries that they have at nice hotels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we have to try every single one, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need one of each. Got one of those porridge stations with a bunch of, you know, ba- basic porridge with a whole bunch of toppings. Probably a crepe station with uh, with someone there making crepes. You know, you can't it can't be a fancy brunch spread without a crepe station. No, not at all. That's very true. Yeah. And I, of course, get like four crepes. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I think during all of this, eventually, Sagittaria does tromp in very, like, <laughs> dejectedly and glare at you as they make their way in towards the buffet as well. I'm going to do that, like, mean girl finger wave where I just raise my hand and wingle my fingers. Hello. Oh, me too. While Angie's doing that, Lucia just blows another raspberry. Getting <laughs> <laughs> is a very genuine wave. <laughs> yeah, Tyra looks much colder towards you. I think she's starting to get why Diana was such, <laughs> like, a mess <laughs> when going up against you. <laughs> Diana's like, Hi. <laughs> uh, Rosette kind of like weakly waves and smiles at you. Like she's still quote unquote <laughs> the nicer one, but she's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, hi. I think Vivi like smiles and waves at them and, and says, uh, I hope you had a nice nap. <laughs> <laughs> the crepes are like super good. Oh, I don't know how many are left though. Yeah. Actually, I took the last one. Oh, no. That's right. We ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Just, I love how the rest of us are trying to be, like, passive aggressive. <laughs> and <laughs> Trixie's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did that on purpose. <laughs> She's the number three out of five, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fair, valid. <laughs> she needs this, personally. <laughs> <laughs> they don't come over to talk to you, but you do notice that Ashley has pulled out a clipboard from, like, whatever, like, eye space <laughs> that she has um, and is writing down notes with kind of, like, a suspicious glare at all of you as they walk away to another table on the other side of the dining area. Oh, no way, I just realized eye space. How... Is Apple thriving? They've got the eye thing down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> they created uh, an alternative to Idle Tube that they just called I Doll, like I capital D O L, and nobody used it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that better. I like that better. <laughs> it, the thing was, it, it was just terrible SEO. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, pretty God. Much. Like everything was just paywalled. Nobody wanted to pay that much mm-hmm. for their stupid service. Good. As long as Apple, as long as capital, um, capitalism isn't thriving, you know, that's all I really care about in this yeah. world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sadly, if Crimson Signal is your biggest threat, I think it's doing pretty well. Oh, yeah. yeah, good point. For now. Plus the entire idol industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. And uh, we got a scholarship. That's literally why Jaden's We got here. a scholarship to come to this camp, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's the mm-hmm. only reason we're here. Yeah. The entire big prize that you're working towards in the Singstar tournament is a big scholarship. Very true. Um wow, these crepes were so good. I really enjoyed. I had way too much. Yeah, I think you very rightfully enjoy the rest of your lunch. 
And I think towards the end of it, you have some camp staff and they, they approach you and they say, uh, congratulations, Rhythmix, for getting here first. How long do you think it'll be before you're ready to meet with Prophetess? I look at Andy. Oh. <laughs> I... Um... If you need a little while, that's fine too. You've had a big day, but just let us know what time you think you'll be ready. I think we need a bit of time to rest. Um, right, no, I everyone? Think, I think we're good right now. Aren't we good right now? No, I think... I, 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 I think, think no, maybe right, Andrew should right? not go first. I think we should have time to like cool down. You know, we did. We went through a lot. Mm-hmm. I was like, like looking at everyone like, please back me up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm good to go. I think we can go talk to her right now. Oh, well, if well, Bane Raven is ready, then mm-hmm. we can take you to the room and take the others in turn. <laughs> they reach to take your hand. Sounds good to me. Okay, no, uh, you know, it's fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to come with. It's fine. You know what? I can come with. <laughs> okay, I guess. We should all go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vivi stands to follow. Yeah, I stand and I like flick my hair and just start walking. Yeah, so they take you through the lodge and they take you to what looks like a big double doors that look like they'll be the entrance to like some big like conference room. But when they open up, you see that this room is actually lined with beds and they usher you towards the bed and they explain that Prophetess's process always involves dreams. So you are going to have to actually fall asleep in order to get to Prophetess's training grounds. You're fucking kidding me. And Angie has her arms crossed and she's... <laughs> and they have sleep aids on hand if you need assistance falling asleep. You have to sleep like right now? Uh, again, if you need more time to work up to that, let us know. We'll, we'll, we can give you some extra time. Um, uh, while well, everyone was talking, Jaden's already in bed and he's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we did say we needed to rest, so I guess this is fine. This makes sense. Queen Bee mm. feels pretty good. I thought I'd get to see Conduit, and then I go and stomp to one of the beds. <laughs> <laughs> they reassure you. Oh, don't worry. Uh, you'll be you'll be meeting Conduit in there as well. What? Yeah, no. Uh, Prophetess and Conduit will be working with you this afternoon. In the dream world. Well, yeah. That's the safest avenue we have to let you experiment with your powers. He's in my dreams all the time. This is no different. And then I leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different uh, than they try to, to reason with you. Honestly, that could be so like terribly embarrassing, like for you. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see when you get there. It, it's uh, like it, it's hard to explain if you haven't experienced it before. Uh, once was enough. <laughs> uh, uh, you got some of the staff sighing off to the <laughs> side. <laughs> There's a few every year. There's a few every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So eventually, do you all? settle in reluctantly or not oh yes. yeah yes. i'm yeah. mad but the day was exhausting so i do it and i just <laughs> end up just falling asleep <laughs> all right so you gradually do slip into slumber after a little while you have the staff monitoring you from off site to make sure that uh, you're like still private but like if anything goes wrong that they can come in in time and as you fall asleep You find yourselves waking up in this plane again. The plane with the glowing teal ground and the kind of calming field around you. And standing there indeed are Prophetess and Conduit. And this time you are all in the space together. And the space actually does feel fairly real. Like it feels like a waking space even though you know it's a dream. And they stand and and smile at you and they say, well... Ready to get started? Let's get her! And I'm- <laughs> Wait, what? No! <laughs> no, no. That is no. the episode yeah, ending line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Perfect. We can just wrap her and hold that engine bag. Just <laughs> grab the back of a jacket or something. so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconics. Alan slash Queen Bee 
was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at QueenBE15160871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at LiveInAday. Bear Lorena was played by special guest voice Fabi Garza, who can be found on Twitter at Fabi underscore Garza. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is under license from Jumendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Humans Win, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and European Archive Music. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.